Hey guys, in this video I'm going to introduce you to the Shadow Caster, which is an awesome new feature with iClone 7 that allows you to add realistic shadows to otherwise shadowless light sources. Shadow casters can be applied to emissive objects, IBL, point lights, and particles in order to simulate the appearance of shadows. First what I'm going to do is turn off the auxiliary light in this scene so you can tell it's completely dark. From there I'm going to go over to the IBL section of the visual tab and activate the IBL feature for the HDR image that I've already preloaded. You'll see the objects in my scene light up from the IBL light source. Notice that the sync sky is activated so that the IBL and sky share the same image. Let's make the sky visible now, and if we want we can reposition the camera to the angle that makes it appear that all the objects are lying on the road. I've already set this up previously with a separate camera, so let's just switch cameras. From here we're going to go up to Create and then select a Directional Shadow from the Shadow Caster menu item. This is generally a good setting to use for sunlight as it always casts parallel shadows from the light source. With a directional shadow item selected in the scene manager, you can use the E hotkey to rotate your shadow caster to match the direction of the light source. Once we've established our best estimate for the direction of the shadows, we can then go over to the darkness slider in the modify panel and tweak the darkness to give us some more contrast in our shadows. In the next scene we have an emissive object that uses global illumination for a light source, which doesn't cast any shadows. We're going to use a spot shadow to simulate the shadow that would normally be cast from this emissive prop. The dark areas currently around the objects in the scene are not shadows but an ambient occlusion effect from the global illumination feature. First let's deactivate the IBL so now we only have a single light source from our emissive prop, which has been loaded with a glow texture. Next I'm going to go to the create menu again, but this time choose a spot shadow caster, which has the exact same features as a spotlight, but it casts shadows instead of light. To quickly align it to the light source, we can use the Align To option with the Shadow Caster selected, then align it to our emissive prop. I'll move it a little below the actual prop so that we don't have any interference from the prop itself. Then I can switch back to my other scene camera and check out the results from that angle. Before we move on to refining the look of the shadow, let's take a look at the parameters of the Spot Shadow Caster. Here we have a simplified project with three objects. Let's select the spot shadow and then switch our camera to a top view so we can look at the darkness, range, and decay. Darkness is pretty straightforward. A stronger value here will darken the shadow. If we take off decay, you can see a much sharper shadow that we probably don't want to use in a more realistic scenario. The range slider simply extends or shortens the distance that your shadow is cast from the parent object. Let's restore the shadow decay and move on to our angle and fall off. Just like a regular spotlight, the angle will narrow or widen, depending on the value of your parameter. You can use Fall Off in combination with Decay to really soften your shadow nicely for a much more blended look. Now that we're familiar with the parameters of the Spot Shadow Caster, let's go back and adjust the one we added to our previous project. With our Spot Shadow Caster selected, let's max out the darkness value, since we only have a single light source in the entire project, and minimal light bouncing from any objects, like walls, in the scene. We can further enhance that by increasing the range for more shadow contrast. We can then tweak the angle and fall off just like we did with the previous example to get the results we want. Ok, so for our third case, let's take a look at how to simulate a shadow for an emissive prop that has been set up to emit light very similar to a point light, as this is another type of light source that doesn't cast any shadows by default. This is a bit trickier since an emissive point light prop will cast light equally in all directions, but we can still use a spot shadow caster with a wide angle range to simulate this. Let's go create our spot shadow caster first and then zero out all the transform values so it's facing directly downwards. We can then use the align tool again to line it up to our spotlight prop. Again, make sure it's a little bit lower than the light so that the light itself doesn't interfere with the shadow cast. Now that it's in the right spot, we just need to tweak the range intensity value and enlarge the angle range to a value of 165, because if it's set to 170, you may experience some blurriness in the shadow. Once we've got all that set, we can attach the caster to the light prop, and then move the light around to see how the shadows will be cast with the caster in different positions. If we wanted to do this but with a real point light, we would need to attach both caster and point light to a dummy, since you can't attach shadow casters to lights. Let's take a look at how to do that in our next scenario. First, let's create a point light. You'll notice that there is a distinct lack of shadow casting happening as I move it around. Next, let's create our spot shadow caster and zero out the transform values again so it's facing directly downwards. 
You'll see next that I won't be able to attach it to the point light, unfortunately, so we need to use the workaround I hinted at earlier with the dummy. So let's just go up to Create a Sphere from the Create and Primitive Shape menu items. I'll use the R hotkey to bring up my scale gizmo and size it down a little bit. What I'll do then is bring it up to where the point light is and then align my point light to the sphere. Then I can attach my light to the sphere from there and you'll see it as a sub-object of my ball prop in the scene manager. I can select the light itself to change any of the values, which I'm doing here by adjusting the multiplier and range values. We want a range large enough so that we're lighting up all the objects in our scene. Finally, we need to align our shadow caster to the ball dummy as well. We can do it in the same way, and when we're finished that, continue on to attach it to the sphere. So now it has two sub-items in the scene manager. From there, we just need to tweak our intensity and spot shadow caster beam values, similar to the settings that we had in the last example. Remembering not to max out the value, but keep it at a value very close to the maximum in order to avoid the blurry shadow issue. From there, I can simply select my sphere again and select the set as dummy option to make it invisible. If it shows up on your screen even after setting it as a dummy, that means you need to turn dummy visibility on or off with a control D hotkey. And that's about all there is to it. The Shadow Caster feature is an essential and flexible tool that you can use to enhance realism in your scene or add shadows in various different ways for emphasis or to set the proper mood.